Hi guys, so Robin asked me to do this talk, but I started a new project on Monday, so I made this PowerPoint at 2 a.m. last night. So please bear with me, because there's some numbers and facts in there as well, and then Robin told me today, like, no, it should only be pictures, you know, it should be inspirational. So please, I hope it's not too much. If it's too much, we'll skip it, okay? But I think it illustrates my talk. So what I want to talk about is my own community, AMS Connected, and I basically want to talk about the expat bubble that we have in Amsterdam. Because a lot of my local friends, I'm part Dutch, part Italian, a lot of my local friends really don't understand, like, why would I talk with them? They're just in there, they're in their fancy bars, but really they're not, and they're really trying to break out, and that's what I'm trying to help them with. So my name is Rowan, what do I do? This is me in the U.S. I work for the U.S. state government and I'm a social innovation fellow. So what does that really mean? Because it sounds very fancy. It basically means that I'm over here in the Netherlands trying to set up social innovation projects. This is my past. I used to work for NATO. Uh, I was the leader of the youth department. So I used to talk a lot in front of people like you, in front of governments, all this stuff. I loved it. I love representing. I love making new projects. But NATO was not my thing. What really is my thing is this. If it works. Yeah. yeah. Are these kids. I come from New West. I love Moroccan and Turkish neighborhoods. I love the languages. I love that. And that is basically what I was missing when I was talking to all these high profile people. And that's what basically made me decide to work for the U.S. State uh, government and to basically come back in. And then if this is working, yeah. Oh, sorry no. about that. And this is the last thing. I love old people. If they're <laughs> old people, I go crazy. Okay? <laughs> so just so you know. I'll do it for you. Yeah, you have it? Yeah. All right. Just hit it. So why am I doing this? I can basically show... Yeah, Robin, then you have to pay attention. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I basically can explain by, by just showing you balloons. My mom works with mentally handicapped people, and whenever she had a break, and when I was on vacation from my school, she would take me to work and just poop me with all the mentally handicapped people and walk away. And I would freak out, like, what the fuck? What am I doing here, you know? What can I do with these people? And they're different, they're strange, ah, you know? And my mom told me, this is life, Rowan. This is it, you know? You have to make it a part of yourself. So, as the famous Dutch saying, you have to hang up the balloons yourself in order to make life a party. So from there on out, I just went crazy. So I'm organizing everything I can, and I'm doing it by myself because a lot of people are not doing it. And I think that we can actually change a lot just by one person at a time. So then we come to the reality check. Why am I taking Amsterdam as an example? Why am I here if I work for the US government? Why Amsterdam? It's basically just because right now, of course, 50% of the world is younger than 34. That's a really big number if you think about it. 50% of the world is young. But at the same time, we're the biggest generation of young people to have ever lived. And with that comes that we're the best educated, but also the least employed generation. So what does that mean? If you have so many smart people, so few jobs, where is that going? It also makes us the most diverse. Because we all want to travel. I think everybody in this room goes on city trips, posts on Instagram, all this stuff. Like, we love that. It's us. We try to mingle. Look at this room right now. But still, we're not employed, and we still sometimes are stuck. That's why I had a meeting with the head of the Bureau of Statistics here in the city, because I kind of wanted to get my facts straight out. Just like the guy just in front of me, you need to get the facts before you get started. Right now, we have about 300,000 immigrants in the city of Amsterdam. And with that comes first generation, so people that really came over here in the 70s, those are about 160,000. Then you have second generation, they're kids that were born here, 127,000. And then the third generation is coming up right now. They're the ones in kindergarten. They're the ones till the ages of 12. So it's a new group coming up. So it's a pretty big group if you think, because in the city of Amsterdam right now we have about 800 and, uh, 830,000 people. So 300,000 of those are immigrant people. Out of every 100 kids in a classroom right now, only 40 have a Dutch heritage. Are really, let's say, allowed, some people even say if you like the Pave party, to say that they're really Dutch. But if you look at the rest, six are born abroad. They've never even, they've, they've not set foot when they were one day old. They were really not here. They had foreign parents, they were born abroad. And then our biggest group, 54 out of 100, has foreign parents. And even 24 of those 54 have mixed parents. So Suriname and Dutch, Moroccan and Turkish, everything you can imagine. 
If you then put that in a diagram, this is your average classroom right now in Amsterdam. 40% is Dutch, 54% has a foreign background, 6% is even born abroad. If you keep all of that in mind and you start looking at what people think of the city, yeah, next one. <laughs> you see that people are not feeling connected anymore. People don't feel like this is their city. They even look at their neighborhoods and they sometimes even have a problem with their own neighborhood. Like, yeah, I'm not really part of that. I don't know if you guys follow politics in Amsterdam right now, but a lot of local politics is coming up again, and especially in the neighborhoods. So you have neighborhoods fighting against each other again instead of feeling just like an Amsterdammer. I mostly hear my white friends saying they feel like an Amsterdammer, you know? It's difficult sometimes. But if you then look at all the groups and what the Bureau of Statistics also saw is that the group that has the least positive opinion right now are the young kids, 12 to 17, and especially the non-Western immigrant kids. That shocked me. Like when I heard that, that was kind of my point, like where of course Farad in front of me saw all the names on the walls and he was like, I'm going to do this. When I heard about this, I was like, all right, this is my time to jump on. I have to do something with that. So then it comes down to the city demographics. What do we see if you really compare it? Amsterdam pushes immigrants out, as we most know. If you don't have the money right now, the city center is bought up and you basically are pushed out to New West and all the other areas, north of course. Rotterdam, the, neighbor, or the mayor over there is really trying to make a raster form like this. Like he's saying, I'm not having this. So you either have a rich city and it has a poor city on top of it like that. And like this, all the streets keep combining. It's a very strict thing. If you want to live there, you can only live in certain streets. And like this, the city is built up. I'm not saying one is better than the other, but it's really interesting that those cities are so close and still so different in how they deal with poverty and rich people, basically. So then this is the last chunk of information that I'm going to show you like this. <laughs> if you then look at the people in Amsterdam, we're actually pretty okay. It's one third really highly educated, one third middle, one third low educated. If you then look at the rapid increase of education, it's there. Like education is booming in Amsterdam. City is giving money to it, people are interested in it, schools are doing great, like admissions is going like crazy. Student rooms, I think for the last 25 years, have had a shortage, you know, like city is doing well like that. But if you then look again at the groups separately, the groups are not coming together. There's still a gap. And there's a large gap between locals and immigrants. That's still because a lot of women from the non-Western communities are still not involved, at least in Amsterdam. And I've seen the numbers until 2012. Um, and especially still the, the, the gap that there is in education. So still, even though we're doing good and the city looks great and we have all these awesome concepts, still there's a gap. That made me come to the next point. I'm talking to you about kids, I'm talking to you about schooling, I'm talking to you about how our city is built up, then why the hell am I standing here to talk about expats? It's very simple, because expats are part of that group. Just to show you some really quick things, as you can see over here, expats are between 25 and 35, that's the age. They're mostly single, 71% of expats in this city is single, only 10.5% has a partner, it's a big thing. Then we go to what they work in, ICT, business, and creative sector. Those are the three main ones in Amsterdam. And when you look at income, mostly it starts over 70 grand a year. If you look at the group that earns between 100 and 150,000 a year, that's 31.6%. That's a big amount of money. <laughs> it's insane if you look at those numbers. So you're single, you're between 25, 35, you work in IT or financial industry, you have a lot of money, and you are here only for one to three years. What does that tell you? If you, there's one more thing, yeah. Where they wanna live as well. The black ones are where they're living right now, blue ones are where they wanna live. So you can see that everybody wants to be in center or zout. They're not talking about east yet. Maybe they will in two years time, but right now they really don't wanna live there. So this is the demographic that I work with. And my goal is how to make it bring. How can I bring this group that has so much money, that is only here for three years, that comes here as a single person in, let's say, the best part of their life, as some people say, how can I connect them with what's happening in the city? That's why most people think of this. They think of parties. They think of social dinners. 
you think of potlucks. And that's it. But actually, no one is offering this. They want to help. So I work with the food bank of the city to make sure that they can package foods. Here's another example. And they want to help even more. You know, it's all about connecting them. Because most expats don't want to be here and just have, let's say, a rich social lifestyle. They want to feel connected. They want to be part of you. Most of the experts that I know tell me, Ro, even though you're not a Dutch person, you're the only Dutch friend I have. Which they don't want. They don't want to leave with that concept of the city. They want to help. And they really don't need to speak Dutch for that. <laughs> they decorate Christmas trees in elderly facilities. I work with uh, 12 right now. That every year we go to, to help them decorate their Christmas trees. We cook for the uh, homeless. So in the shelter behind the Waterkrant, you have homeless people every night. We cook for 55 people. I have a waiting list of 25 people per night. So many people want to cook. It's crazy. And they have to pay for that. <laughs> so they pay. <laughs> I'm not kidding. They pay 15 euros a person. And with that, we buy all the food and we cook. They want to help. They want to help in gardens. This is one of the only community gardens we have in Amsterdam right now that almost nobody knows about. It's between a lot of concrete buildings, but there's this green oasis that an awesome lady in the neighborhood decided to build. Experts want to help. They want to work. They want to volunteer. They want to connect. They want to see what the city is about. They want to show this to their home country and say, listen, this is what Amsterdam is doing about homeless people. This is what they can do with that. And most of all, they want to meet Dutch people. So if that's not you guys, who else? I was really thinking about this and I thought, why am I not going to Dutch crazy celebrities like that? So I introduced them to the uh, oldest hookers of Amsterdam, to talk about prostitution, to hear about how the neighborhoods change. I introduced them to Henk Schiffmacher, to talk about tattoo culture. What has changed? Why do you have a tattoo? Why did Hank um, recently actually tattooed his wife with a Berber tattoo? Why is he doing that? What's the reason behind all of this? They loved it. They, they kept asking questions because they want to soak it up. And that's why we also walk through neighborhoods with them. We don't go on the commercial tours that everybody is offering and where you hear the same story about the red light district, but we take a local person who sometimes feel uncom feels uncomfortable to stand in front of a group like this, but who actually tells them about her experience in the neighborhood. Not about what you see and about what you can read in every book, but about why she lives there and just like the guy from East, why he is proud of that neighborhood. And the last thing, they want to know Dutch culture in every way possible. So this is me actually with a picture from last night of them playing Appenkoi. And uh, it's illegal right now, but we still can do it with grown-ups if you sign a consent form. So we do. <laughs> they want to play Dutch games, like here, how you can see with the running. And then the last one, this is it. They want to make friends, like everybody of us. Most Dutch people say, yeah, but I have my friends from college. I don't need more people. But they really want that. It's that last barrier. So again, you've now heard me speak another five minutes, but not about kids. So that's why I will come to that right now. These are my two projects. My first one is the one that I'm talking about right now. I run AMS Connected. I started doing this after organizing a lot of parties in the city. My beginning number for parties started at 800 people, sometimes 1,500 people. I loved it. It was great. I was walking around. People were having fun. It was amazing. But nobody was really connecting. I saw a lot of people flirting, getting drunk, but nobody was really going home and saying, wow, I'm going to see you tomorrow for coffee. That's why I set up AMS Connected. My groups are never bigger than 30 people. And we always do something. So you go to charities, you meet these people like Hank Schiffmacher, or you go into the neighborhood with local people. Because like that, you always have something to do. So even if people are shy, they can always have something to talk about after and say, hey, that was pretty cool. And like this, people don't feel that they cannot talk to you. They're not so scared. Because the group is small. It's kind of like a classroom, how you did it in the past. So right now, I started a year and a half ago. I right now have about 2,300 active members. And with that, we rob it. Sorry. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> we do over 150 events a year. So I do a lot per week, but I have a team for that, which is an amazing team. And mostly we focus on inclusiveness and connecting people to the city. Yeah, and we work, yeah, I thought it was interesting. We work with 79 local venues 
um, and with a lot of charities as well. Then my next event, and this is the last one I will bore you with tonight, is the Amsterdam Language Cafe. I set this one up with Kuhn. Uh, Kuhn is my friend. He runs Kuntact, which is the biggest language school in the city, and he loves kids. Like, he really wanted to do something with that. So we thought, okay, how do we finally bring expats and kids together? And then he said, why not create a language circle? That's why we came up with this. People come in on a Friday night at the beginning of the month, 250, 300 people in a room practicing languages, and they all donate two euros. And those two euros we use for a language project in New West, where we teach migrant <coughs> children Dutch. We help them with their skills. Because I don't know if you know, but the Dutch system is changing. So the educational level that they need to reach before they can go to high school, to college, to university, is going to go up. Because they see that kids right now are failing. So that five and a half that Dutch people took in the past to kind of pass their class will not cut it anymore. Mm -hmm. They need to surpass. And when I started my first lesson, I was shocked by the level of, of writing right now. I don't know if you know, but in Dutch universities right now, 20% of students need to, everybody needs to do a test. 20% doesn't make the Dutch writing test. University students, we're not writing anymore. We're not, you know, we're typing. And if we see a typo, the computer fixes it for us. So how does that work with kids? And how does that work with kids that come from parents that have not lived here before and that do not know the language and cannot help them with their homework? That's why we have people connecting. We put salsa in there. We work with a lot of local venues to bring in something cool. I had Robin come in with itinerary to really bring like shots and portraits from all over city, from cities all over the world to kind of showcase that. So we always try to add a cool element. And with that money, we take it back to the kids. We teach them. We help them. We bring in local celebrities from New West. And we really try to not introduce them to the mayor or to really famous DJs, but we try to introduce them to local heroes to kind of showcase that for them. So right now the platforms we use mostly is Meetup and Facebook. We're close to 6,000 likes, so we're really happy with that. We have a lot of people there, and we give them weekly lessons. So like this, they keep going. Parents pay 30 cents per lesson. It's very low, but like this, with the, all the two euro donations, we keep it going. And people love it so much that they offer to volunteer. And here are my final points. Robin brings them. Language is not a barrier. A lot of people told me, oh my god, you're going to try to connect expats to charities? Have you ever even tried that? They need to speak Dutch, and they need to be there, they cannot understand. They can. You do not need to speak Dutch to package food. You do not need to speak Dutch to cook. So like this, I'm slowly trying to break barriers in Amsterdam to bring international people into charities. You have to cater to one's needs. I have 150 events a year because a lot of times people cannot make it. Everybody is traveling, everybody is busy. So if I would do only 10 of those, it doesn't work. But like these, in small groups, you still have a big impact. Market changes every day. Extra markets can be discovered. I started my own brunch club. Three years ago, when I went to all the venues, they didn't even know what to do with that. They were like, oh, okay, so do you want scrambled eggs? And I really thought, what? <laughs> There's no brunch here? And now if I go to brunch venues, I cannot even book for a group anymore because it's so popular that there's no spot for groups over 25 anymore. You see, the market is changing all the time, so you always need to come with something new. Outreach helps. If I show my results, it's always there. And the last one. Oh. Ah. <laughs> we something just lost stuck. It. Something stuck. Don't worry. Okay. Yeah. 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 So my last point was everybody wishes to connect. You know, like most of you guys are here. It's very chilled. It's very relaxed. But I really hope that afterwards people just walk around and try to make a conversation because that's in the end. I think what we all want. Thank you very much.